This morning on our journey through the Psalms, we find ourselves in Psalm 72. It's a powerful psalm that describes the perfect king. You know, leadership is never easy, but it's especially challenging in the times we're in. It doesn't matter if you're the mayor of the city, the premier of a province, the prime minister, or president of a country. This is not an easy time for us to lead. There's immense pressure to make right decisions. Budgets are constantly challenged. Policies are regularly questioned. Social issues are deep-rooted and complicated, and problems and crises they have to face regularly would cause most of us to turn gray. I know I wouldn't want to be a world leader right now. Are they going to do everything right? Well, of course not. Are they going to fail and make mistakes? Yep, because they're human. And we've come to accept their humanness, which is why this psalm is so amazing, because it describes a king who is perfect in every way. A king who rules his kingdom without error or bad judgment. So how does this perfect king rule his kingdom? Well, verses 1 to 4 tell us. They say, Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in, in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. Give deliverance to the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. This king rules with righteousness and justice. Wouldn't it be awesome to have a leader over us whose character and integrity we could always trust, whose eyes are drawn to the injustice of life, and whose policies defended the cause of the broken and brought justice to the afflicted? This is the kind of leader the world is longing for today. It's the kind of leader that would definitely have my vote. And the king uh, the psalmist speaks of is this king. He's from above. The psalm is a messianic psalm describing a heavenly king appointed by God who will rule with righteousness and justice. It's a psalm describing Jesus the king. And God has given him the authority to rule over his kingdom. But it's a very different kingdom from anything we see on earth. It's a kingdom where the king will help people to be reconciled to God. It's a kingdom that brings peace to the people. And it's a kingdom that brings justice to the poor. The clear message is that when the poor can't find justice anywhere else, they can find it in this king of heaven. Because he rescues the vulnerable and cares for the poor. And he crushes the oppressor and those that take advantage of the vulnerable and afflicted. Under King Jesus, the poor who are often exploited by the rich, will receive the attention of God. Now, isn't that a beautiful image of life under this perfect king? Well, what's the response of the people to this perfect king who will rule with righteousness and justice? Well, verse 11 tells us, Let all kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. You see, the people stand in awe of this king and this kingdom because we've never seen a king like this before. They worship him. And our response to this perfect king is to bow down and to worship him. But even more than that, our response is to reflect the character of this king in our own lives. That would be uh, that we would be righteousness and full of justice ourselves. It's important that we act justly wherever we are, in our homes, in our community, in our church, that we look after the poor that we defend those that have no voice, that we welcome the marginalized and see them through the eyes of God. Verse 12 says, For he will rescue the poor who cry out, and the afflicted who have no helper. He will have pity on the poor and helpless, and save the lives of the poor. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious in his sight. Now, what would it look like for you and I to take on the character of this perfect king? Well, it might mean that we would set aside some of our plans or resources or time and help someone who we know is in need. It might mean that we uh, take some time to consider the challenges the world's facing today and step up and speak against the injustice that we see. The psalmist concludes this, this psalm with a wonderful declaration of praise. And this is what he says. 
May the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wonders, be praised. May his glorious name be praised forever. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Let me pray. So, Father, thank you for this psalm that describes the perfect king. And help us to understand this king and his kingdom and, and to live this out. And help us to take on the character of the king in our own lives. May you help us to be people of justice. May you help us to be people of hope during these times. And may we look to you as the good king. And may we long for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me this morning and have yourself a great day.